we are going to make more problems. I swear, this does actually work really well. So I realized while I was editing this video that I never actually explained the problem with the shrinker jaws. And it actually has nothing to do with the hard parts of the jaws themselves. It actually has to do with this spring. So when they're set up correctly, these jaws actually work really well. The problem is mine aren't actually set up very well. Uh, in addition to all of the finishing problems and such that I'd shown earlier, this wire that retains the, the jaws and lifts them up so that they can actuate is a little bit too short. So it pulls this lower set all the way up into the top set so that its default position is already all the way closed. Basically, they get set up in here, and then when you put force down on them, it forces these two outer jaws together and forces those to go inward. When you get a piece of metal stuck inside, squeeze it together and it shrinks it. Basically the way that works. So, with this wire too short, this range of motion has already been closed up, so it can't actually do anything. A smart person would simply just remake this wire so that it can hang and work the way that it's supposed to. But I am not very smart, so I came up with this complicated system that involves this metal hanger like that. And like this and then that'll hang over there but we need a right way to retain it so yes only that doesn't fit so this has to go into here first then it can go on in theory what the really there we go all right I got the jaws out of my shrinker here. You really can't take anything for granted with these. So I've got these plates started that are going to go along the side of the jaw to raise and lower them and hold them square. was assuming these holes would be in the center, but uh, not only are they not center, but they're not even well, uh, in the same plane to each other. It's fairly minor, but I mean, come on guys. They were, uh, probably had a uh, fixture. You'd slide them up, drill it, slide them up, drill it, and they were just ever so slightly off. Anyway, just more amusing garbage that I found. Anyhow, uh, I don't think it really matters. I'm gonna go ahead, just drill these center. I'll dress them off. I'll take a little bit off of one side if I need to or, or whatever. Of course, this is assuming that I can drill a hole any more centered than they did. <laughs> Which is assuming a lot. I don't have the highest of hopes in my ability to drill a hole either. So, uh, as much as I'm talking sh about these things, I probably could not have made these better. Now granted, if I had all the machinery that they had when they were doing this, you know, a couple extra minutes, no, I probably wouldn't have even done that. Also, I realized I was just playing around with stuff I had in my uh, in my little trays here, and I found out that my uh, my tungstens actually fit really well in here. But I bought some three thirty second drill bits. Hopefully, I can get a nice square ish hole, uh, and then I will just braze the TIG rod into the back side of these plates, and then make a new cover that goes around with the appropriate spacers to uh, shim them out and hopefully recenter them. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I want to try to straighten out the, uh, straighten out the frame a little bit in the press. But with the sun the way it is, I don't know if I'm gonna try to do that today because it is blazing hot and see how sweaty I am standing here doing basically nothing. Yeah, so drill a hole, lay some pins in, and then once I've got this made, my plan is I'm going to fit them up into the uh, into the machine. I'm going to use like a whatever piece of material 
happens to be nearby in the appropriate size. Ooh, we'll use this. Have a quarter inch bolt, or maybe not. I don't know. I think I had a plan for this yesterday, and then I took, you know, a sleep. And now I don't remember what I was going to do. Hmm. Because basically I'm redesigning this all together. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how that part is going to work out just yet. I'm going to leave these square. If I'm going to try to taper them and do something fancy. In any case, for right now, I need to try to drill a hole. Maybe center, maybe not. I mean, I think it'll work for me either way because, you know, these things are kind of garbagey. I was actually thinking at one point, uh, I had some drills that I had misordered that I thought were 330 seconds, but they were 364 ths. And I think I was trying to order 930 seconds bits. Um, math is difficult when you do it on hard mode. To give you an idea in my confidence level for making these holes, this is the only drilling operation I need with these 330 seconds bits, and uh, I bought four of them to drill those two holes. Nope. Hey, no. Oh. I actually got a centered hole. I don't think I've ever been so upset about that. <laughs> this is what we're aiming for, and that way the die can slide on the tungsten pin while the, uh, well, I guess actually it would be in this orientation. Hopefully keep it mostly straight so the everything engages evenly. So I need to put all of this back together again. The challenge is trying to figure out how tall, I'm going to breathe those pins in first, trying to figure out how tall to make this thing. Yeah, let's brace those pins in first. That way I can clamp this together. All right, so it appears as though I don't have any proper brazing rod, uh, but I do have brazing flux and I've got some Romex. So we're gonna make that work. And I dropped my tungsten. So I already cleaned it up. Uh, just used a uh, conditioning wheel and the die grinder um, and as far as setup for this I'll set it up in the vise try to get everything as square as I can oh uh, the technique here is going to be uh, slather it on and grind it off so unfortunately I'm a little bit worried about melting this tungsten and I also have no idea where my welding tip is. But I'm gonna find out, I guess. It's kind of the uh, MO for today, I suppose. All right, got the copper fluxed. I'm not gonna heat the plate directly, or the, the tungsten directly. Let's see if I run out of battery before I finish. All right, let's see how terrible that turned out. Wow, those aren't square at all, are they? All right, so with it all clamped up, it fits. The jaws move independently. So in theory, these will actually work once we get it in the machine. Um, now we've actually got to get it set up, put the jaws back in the machine, and then do a measurement. And then what I'll probably do is go back to the bolt idea. We'll bend these tabs in so that they just barely touch the sides of the, uh, the lever. And get moved over there, get that set up, and uh, move on to the next step. I think probably the easiest way to do this. Oh. Now make sure you've got your dies offset. You don't want these gaps in the same place, otherwise it squishes up into the into the gap and then doesn't work. All 
I'm gonna go ahead and get these marked. I'm gonna bend, go ahead and bend these guys. I'll uh, probably just do that on the anvil. Oh, uh, real quick, dirty like. got it clamped in place. I made a spacer that's uh, two pieces of 18 gauge sandwiched together and that's about the gap it has with the pedal at rest. So I'm going to pick a spot here. I've got this chainsaw file which doesn't look like it's going to do much of anything. <laughs> no, that's, that's going to be a waste of time. Hey, look at that. They actually work. Need to build a retainer to hold it in place now. That still needs to get welded the rest of the way around. But I think these pins are so short I can just bend it to get the uh, to get the lower jaws out if I need to. I just need to make a cover that'll go around the front to uh, hold it in place this way. going to scribe down across the top of that corner. I'm going to close the rest of this saw back up. I think I can tighten that back up in the brake now. Now I've overbent this corner a little bit, uh, trying to get the, the line crisped up. Uh, and I'm going to work mostly right along the crown and I try to straighten it back out. So with this radius, I'm not going to hit the peak. I'm going to hit just off to the side of the peak and just off to the side of the peak. I don't know how well you can see, but it kind of dips in a little bit right here. So I'm going to work on the top and try to push it back out. I don't have enough of a corner here. <laughs> All right, back on the block. I'm going to try to get over a over an edge, lift it up just a tiny bit, and then pull it back towards me. Pull it back. Pull it back. a little tight. Yeah, that's not going to work. I went too far. Oh no, my tungsten pin broke. Well, I guess that wasn't going to work. Since these are just brazed in, I'm kind of hoping I can just pop this out with a center punch. Ha, that worked. Just realized I've been leaving my fan on. Okay, so I do need to widen this back out. I think this is the point where 
I've kind of got to deal with the the offset on the on the top and bottom jaws here through a few different dangerous attempts. <laughs> oh, I've got it down to like less than an eighth or probably like a sixteenth of an inch off. I'd like to try to get it the rest of the way straight though. I'm gonna have another go with this. Oh, janky setup. I think what I've got going on here is mostly self-explanatory. And this is pretty far from the safest way to try this. In fact, this is pretty sketchy. So I've got you guys set up in front so you can see how far we're going. This already didn't work once, so I figure to see if it won't work if I do the exact same thing a second time. I have no reason to think that it wouldn't, you know, despite the empirical evidence that it didn't work the first time. This guy right here is a piece of quarter inch uh, hot roll. This is a half inch hot roll. And we've got it set all the way over back onto this collar and tight. Is it gonna be straight? I did not go this far yesterday. I think the efficacy of this is mostly going to be contingent on where it's actually bent. Um, we're right back where we started. Except for now the bolt is really hot. Ow! But I think we're close enough. I'm just going to set the jaws so that they're slightly offset. All right, so I think probably my next step is I'm gonna make the plates to bolt on the side and figure out how to trim this upper section so it looks nice. This actually fits pretty good now. I'm just gonna make uh, some plates to bolt it to the to the chassis. Obviously, I've still gotta uh, trim this up, get it fitted, and then uh, weld it. But that's easy peasy.
try that again. Hey, look, it's actually doing things. Maybe this wasn't just a complete waste of time and money. Ooh, that's actually quite aggressive. I like it. Oh, yeah. It... Kind of forgot to screw the bottom jaw in. I was wondering why everything was going cattywampus. Ooh, I'm super happy with that. That is fantastic. <laughs> oh. Oh, that makes me so freaking happy. And this is 18 gauge, which is pretty much all I ever intend to use on this. Like, as far as as heavy as I want to go. probably have a couple more little tweaks to do uh, to make it run just a tiny bit smoother still a tiny bit of binding in the pedal at the very bottom which doesn't seem to be an issue in use in fact there's enough spring action uh, springing in the device and everything that it's pulling itself back open at that binding point. Now I'm just screwing around trying to see how tight this will go. I'm realizing this is actually probably a better or more realistic use of the, the deep throat Oh, uh, aspect of this shrinker. And I just need some planishing, clean it up. And I probably have like actual cash out of pocket. I'm still under 150 bucks. Wow, uh, granted, not everybody has this much scrap laying around, but ma'am. Well, this is a little embarrassing. I, uh, broke the pins again. Apparently, tungsten pins were just a stupid idea. So, I'm going to go back to my first, second idea and use one of those, uh, drill bits. And so, yeah, I have to debraze these. I've got to stuff a drill bit in there. Perfectly new, usable one and um ruin it yeah so let's uh let's do that so these are just high speed steel bits with a black oxide coating on them i don't think the brazing material would really give two f's about the black oxide coating but i'm going to go ahead and remove it anyway because i've had enough setbacks with this thing and if I can avoid an extra one or two, I'm going to go ahead and take that option at this point. <laughs> Even though I don't really have any use for a 3 30 seconds bit outside of this, I would like to try to only use the one bit in this process. We'll see if I'm successful or if I screw this up multiple times and need to start over. Hopefully that is not foreshadowing. It probably is. Ooh, I found my welding kit. And I forgot this just had two little tiny tack welds holding it together.
clamp it back up and weld that down because I do know it works in this configuration. It's just a matter of these pins. I think the tungsten was just getting too brittle and uh, just shearing off. I'm sure somebody was probably watching me do that going, <laughs> you're a dumbass. to mention I also had to round off this front edge and massage this corner a little bit because they were binding a little bit after it got welded together so it moves freely through its range of motion here now with this stuff adjusted I'm going to test it one more time here and make sure it's working as intended and then it gets stripped down for paint so I am trying my hardest to actually finish projects here these days and if you can see here they are definitely engaging correctly mostly all right so piece of 16 gauge here We'll really test it out. Oh, it does not care. Whoa, what was that? Oh, let's just keep going. Ah! Slipping. Yeah, this side's it's not quite returning. Well, I guess we clean it up, paint it, and we get to start on the plunging hammer part. Yay! The whole reason I was doing all of this was because I didn't want to wait for the wire I had accidentally ordered, and me being stubborn, I didn't want to reorder it from somewhere locally. Um, and I was being impatient, so I started doing this. And well, last week, the wire came in. <laughs> Mostly matches the, the wire it's already made out of. It's just a tiny bit bigger, which is actually what I was hoping for. Oh, uh, so it uh, would hold the dies up a little bit better. Um, but this is still a lot looser than I was hoping. However, the pin broke again. Um, I'm pretty sure this is just my fault. With these guys in place and without the pins holding it in, which you'll have to take my word for it because there is a pin here and I will be using it. Um, but with the pins in place, they mostly stay in the correct orientation and they actually want to go upwards which works to our benefit so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and snip off this little end sticky outy piece and braise that in there because I know this isn't gonna cause a problem and I don't want to cut up another one of those drill bits just for a little tiny piece since like I said the oh the locating is being done pretty well with the just flat sides of this little carrier that I've built that should work. He says, doing the exact same thing for the third time.
So it's been a lot of work, but it's finally ready to get put into service. There are a couple things I'd like to do to improve some functionality on it. I think I've got an idea for making the jaws uh, a toolless change. Uh, I still need to put a proper pivot bolt in it, and I keep forgetting to buy bolts for that. But, uh, but it's ready to go as is, uh, even if it does take a little bit of time to change jaws, but that's kind of standard for shrinker stretchers. I'm really happy to have it done. I uh, can't wait to actually get some get some projects done. I've got a bunch of things lined up uh, waiting. Would I recommend paying full price for one of these? Absolutely not. For $300, um, this is not the machine that you want to buy. This is way too much work for that when the Eastwood machine is only like another $150 or $180. Not worth it. Um, for $130, if you enjoy doing this kind of thing, then yeah, go ahead. Oh. For $130, yeah, I think it's worth doing if you enjoy modding stuff and fabrication and that kind of thing. If you just want to work on your car, just go buy the Eastwood or, you know, something that's not garbage to begin with. <laughs> Oh, so the, the, go buy the, so for $130, I, I think it's worth it if you enjoy modifying things and doing fabrication work and that sort of thing. If you just want to work on your car, go get the Eastwood or better, you know, don't, don't screw around with this. Uh, or get one of the, the stupid little shrinker stretchers just for, you know, if you, you just need smaller stuff, then just get the smaller one, you know, because honestly, I don't even... Now that I've got it done and I've got all this stuff going on, I don't even really know what I would need a deep throat shrinker for. Um, there's not really that many things that I am trying to get done that I really need one for. Um, I'm sure I'll find uh, a million different reasons to eat crow on that statement for, uh, eventually, but um, for now, uh, I don't care. Uh, for this thing to get a piece of. <clears throat> so, in the end, $130, is it worth it? Maybe. <laughs> if you enjoy doing fabrication work and you just enjoy doing stuff in general, um, yeah, it's it's worth the one hundred thirty dollars to to do this and you know save yourself some time versus trying to build one yourself. I do think it's worth it for that. If you were to buy one of these at full price for like the two hundred and ninety seven or three hundred dollars that they are on like eBay and stuff, no, that's that's a waste of money. That's a giant waste of money. Um, the uh, oh, for just a little bit more, you can get yourself an Eastwood. Uh, or you know something better. Uh, I mean, if you're if you've just got a bunch of material laying around and you want to buy one of those three hundred dollar machines and just slap a bunch of reinforcement on top until it's until it works, and that's up you know that's up to you. Um, but uh, I would not, knowing what I know about them now, I would not pay three hundred dollars for one of these. Um, but. Uh, I think in the future I probably would probably like to do some finessing as far as like the ratios and stuff. Uh, I think I could probably get it to be a little bit lighter. Uh, on 18 gauge it's kind of, uh, I feel like I'm probably doing a little bit more work than I should be for a kick shrinker. Um, I could be completely wrong about that because I've never used another kink shrinker. Kink, kick, shrink, I don't know. This is the only one I've ever used. so. Oh, uh, I mean the little hand job ones, yeah, and they do the, the thing, but you know, I'm not so much for hand jobs, I really like to get my foot in there, so. At some point I think I might like to change this over to a toolless jaw change. Um, I think with some modifications I can get this to be, you know, 30 second swap, uh, if that, to uh, go back and forth between the jaws. Um, I can actually just remake another one of these the the metal hanger part and it can slide 
into this cover the same way as it does with this and then whack it on there and boom you're done I think if I slot these holes down here then I can set it up so it goes on like this and then down and then I can put a thumb screw up in top here all I've got to do is make this or make another one of the hangers that fits inside of this cover uh, for the, the stretcher jaws and they should work exactly the same oh they should I don't know I'm probably uh, hate myself for having said those words out loud <laughs> but uh, anyway uh, I hope once I actually get to some of the other projects I've got going I've got my uh, I have a Datsun 280ZX that I have been sitting on forever um, just waiting to get going and then of course I've got like my main pro I do have a couple project cars that are in dire need of some fabrication work uh, I have a 68 uh, a 68 AMC station wagon uh, a 68 Rambler American station wagon that I am body swapping with a S3 SC300 that I'm body swapping with an SC300. Um, and then I have a 280ZX that um, needs a bunch of rust repair. Uh, and I don't really know long-term future of that car, but uh, yeah, rambling. I don't know, you're probably not even gonna see any of this, so. I've got a couple projects in the works that are just itching for some meta. Oh. I've got a couple projects coming up. I've got a 280ZX that has a bunch of rust repair that needs to get done, and I've got a long term project um, that I hope to get to sometime eventually. <laughs> so, I do have a couple projects uh, that. This will, uh, I do have enough projects for this tool to totally justify having it and spending all the time that it took to get it functioning. Um, and no doubt the uh, time spent on this uh, will be uh, gained back many times over once I actually get some of these other projects in, in motion. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know if I convinced you to buy one or not to buy one, uh, or maybe you just wanted to watch someone make some poor decisions, but in any case, thank you for watching, and I will see you with my next project.